Remember the good old days when all we had to worry about was our online data being used for targeted ads? Well, in 2025, there is a new threat to privacy to worry about. Your files might be used to train AI. And the cloud source services are really right in the middle of it because, well, they have all your data. In this video, you're going to learn whether cloud storage is using your files to train AI, which providers you should avoid, and more importantly, which cloud storage services actually protect your privacy. And at the end of this video, I'll also share my top tips to help you keep your data from being used without your consent. So make sure to really stick around until the end. Let's cut to the chase. Are cloud storage services using your files to train AI models? Well, it depends on which service you're using. To understand what's happening, let's rewind the clock a little bit. In January 2023, OpenAI's ChatGPT hit 100 million users in just two months. That set off a massive race in the tech world, with all the big tech companies basically rushing to catch up on the AI train. Microsoft added its AI chatbot to Bing in February 2023, initially calling it Bing Chat, later rebranded to Copilot. The following month, Google launched its AI chatbot Gemini, which was first introduced as BART. Suddenly, Everyone needed massive amounts of data to train these AI models. So where did this data come from? There were some, <clears throat> well, interesting developments in how AI companies handle user data. In this Help Center article, for example, that I'm showing you here on the screen, OpenAI says they get their training data from three sources, public information from the internet, partnerships with other companies, and data from users and researchers. While they claim they don't actively seek out personal information, they admit that since so much online data relates to people, personal information does end up in their training sets. Well, further down in the same article, OpenAI claims they can use this data under what's called legitimate interest under GDPR law. Essentially, legitimate interest allows companies to use data without consent if they have a valid reason, such as improving their services, preventing fraud, or ensuring security. But not everyone agrees this applies to OpenAI's best OpenAI's practices. Italy's data protection agency, Garante, fined OpenAI 15 million euros in December last year. They argued that the company's web scraping actually violates GDPR in major ways, including training ChatGPT without correctly identifying an adequate legal basis, violating GDPR's Article 6. Google took a similar approach. In July 2023, they confirmed they scrape public data from the internet for AI training, and interestingly, the privacy policy originally referred to language models specifically, well, but has since been updated to cover all AI models. While this may seem like a small change in wording, it actually opens the door for Google to use your data for all sorts of AI technologies, including image recognition, voice assistants, instead of just text-based language models. Oh man. <sighs> Let me get a sip of coffee first before we really continue with all this news. Speaking of coffee, I'm basically fueled by it daily, and after struggling to find consistently great beans, my partner and I founded Coffeeness to create the perfect chocolatey espresso blend. We've tested this blend in over 100 machines to make it perfect. Take a look at our overflowing storage rooms right here with all the machines. From high-end manual espresso machines, like this beauty here, to Breville or Sage semi-automatics, or maybe you're the super automatic guy and you prefer a Dura machine, like this one here. Or the budget models from DeLonghi that works also perfectly with our espresso. It delivers exceptional results every single time. Wonderful. We personally visit our partner farms in Brazil every year, sourcing 100% Arabica beans through direct trade relationships. And each small batch is freshly roasted in Brooklyn, resulting in a medium strength espresso with delightful chocolate and hazelnut notes. 
Our customers love it too, with hundreds of five-star reviews on our website and Trustpilot. One reviewer wrote, great beans for my super auto with smooth crema as in a coffee bar in Italy. Lovely to hear that. Use the coupon code CLOUDWORDS for 5% off your first order and European viewers visit our EU store for beans roasted in Frankfurt and US viewers head to coffiness.com for Brooklyn roasted beans. All the links are in the description box below. And now, back to today's video. Now, a paper written by six AI experts predict that between 2026 and 2032, AI models will have consumed virtually all public available human written text on the internet. It could happen even sooner if companies continue with their aggressive training practices. The tech industry calls this hitting the data wall, a point where companies have exhausted the publicly available data they've relied on to train their AI systems. This explains why companies are scrambling to secure new sources. Without fresh data, AI development will stagnate and companies risk falling behind in the race to build smarter, more capable systems. Unless, obviously, we're going to reach general intelligence before that. So what's the current workaround before general intelligence takes over. Companies are now buying data to train their eye. Reddit, for example, is earning 60 million per year by letting Google use its content to train AI. And Meta is using content shared on their platforms, including posts, photos, and captions. LinkedIn now openly uses your data for AI training. And since November 2022, X, or Twitter, also allows companies to use your data for their AI training. User data is like the new oil of the digital age and cloud storage services are sitting on massive reserves. Selling that information to AI companies is a lucrative business, but what about the cloud storage service you're currently using to store your files? Let's look at where major providers stand, starting with, well, you guessed it, Google. Now, Google faced a lawsuit last year, alleging they scraped data from hundreds of millions of users without their consent to train and develop their AI products. The plaintiffs claimed that Google has been secretly stealing everything ever created and shared on the internet and using this to train AI tools like BARD. The lawsuit is still ongoing, but Google has called it baseless. They say they don't scrape data for AI training, but there are three things you should basically know. First, they do scan your data for other purposes than their privacy policy doesn't rule out using your data for AI in the future. This policy applies across all Google services, including Google Drive. This means that while Google might not be actively using your data to train AI, right now it can sit on that data until it decides to use it in the future. Second, they don't offer end-to-end -end encryption, meaning Google can access your files if they choose to. And third, Third-party extensions you use with Google services come with their own privacy policies and they might also be collecting or sharing your data. So it is smart to take a few minutes to read through their privacy policies before granting access to your files. Aside from Google, Microsoft has clarified to Reuters that they don't use Microsoft 365 data to train AI models. However, users raise concerns on social media about the connected experiences feature, which is on by default. Microsoft clarified this feature is just for things like co-authoring and cloud storage, not AI training, but when enabled, it does grant Microsoft access to user content and usage data within Office applications. So if you're not comfortable with that, now's the time to really opt out. Adobe faced similar concerns. Users interpreted their terms of service to mean they were training AI with their creative content. The company updated the terms of service to clarify that this really wasn't the case. And our team reached out to Adobe. They confirmed that they only use content for AI training if you choose to submit your work to the Adobe stock marketplace. However, like Google and Microsoft, Adobe doesn't offer client-side encryption for its cloud storage. This means they technically have the ability to access your files even if they choose not to use them for AI training for now. Amazon Web Services takes a different approach. Now, according to their website, AI services opt out policies allow you to control data collection for AWS AI services for all the accounts in an organization. Essentially, what happens is that AWS AI services use and store content for what they call service improvements which they define as using non-personal content to improve Amazon Web Services and 
affiliate machine learning and AI tech. You do have the right to opt out of having your content used for these service improvements by configuring an AI services opt-out policy using AWS organizations. You can find a list of the supported services by this AI opt-out policy on their website. AWS GovCloud regions operate differently. According to their website, in these US regions, they simply don't use or store AI content processed by services like Amazon Bedrock and SageMaker. The AI opt-out for data collection is automatically applied by default, meaning your content never gets used to improve their models and isn't shared with any model providers. How can you make sure the data you store in the cloud is not being used to train AI models? The simplest answer is choose a service with client-site encryption, also known as zero-knowledge or end-to-end -end encryption, or encrypt all of your files before you upload them to the cloud. This guarantees your files are encrypted on your device before they're uploaded to the cloud. Only you hold the encryption key and no one, not even the service provider, can read or use your files for AI training without your explicit permission. One of our top recommendations for this is Sync.com. They offer client-side encryption on all plans, including their free tier, and it's one of the most secure options available, though it does sacrifice some speed for security. Watch our review for a closer look at Sync.com's features and performance, which I'm gonna leave you in the description box below. Then there's pCloud, which is another super safe option. They offer client-side encryption, but unlike sync.com, they charge extra for access to a personal encrypted folder. Anything you store in this folder is locked with client-side encryption and only you can decrypt it using your private encryption key. Be aware though, you need this private encryption key to get to your data. If you forget it, if you lose it, you will lose your access to your files. Beware. Another option we have is Internext. They offer client-side encryption on all their plans as well. And if you upgrade to a paid plan, you unlock post-quantum encryption. We've covered that topic in another video, so go ahead and check that one out as well. IceDrive is another great cloud storage service in terms of safety. They provide client-side encryption only on their paid plans. And a cool feature about IceDrive is they let you choose which files to encrypt by using a special encrypted folder. And then there's Mega. They offer client-side encryption completely free of charge. Their free plan is also one of the most generous out there with an upgradable 20 gigabytes of storage, making it one of the best cloud storage services out there. What can you do to protect your data? Well, first, check your current cloud storage provider's privacy policy. Look specifically for sections about AI or language model training or data usage for machine learning. Second, consider switching to a provider that offers client-side encryption if privacy is your top priority. All the cloud storage services we mentioned earlier offer this level of protection in one way or the other, or, well, encrypt your files before you upload them to the cloud, but that requires a little more technical expertise that a lot of people maybe not want to really consider. And lastly, take advantage of opt-out options when available. Most services are now required to provide these, but some features need to be set up right from the start. Take iDrive, for example. They offer client-side encryption, but you can only enable it during the initial account setup. There's no way back. What do you think about cloud storage services using your data for AI training? Are you comfortable with it? Or will you be making changes to protect your privacy? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.